Hello friends, hey everyone. It's me. Welcome to another That Dan Driscoll drawing video. I've got a interesting piece, or at least hopefully interesting story to go along with the drawing. Hope you enjoy it. And let's start the drawing. When I was young, very young, I lived in a suburb of Chicago with my family, and my parents would drive up to Minnesota to see my grandparents, my father's parents, and we would, on the way home, stop at a from what I recall, a kind of a barn or a shack. But what it was, was a studio. It was a store, it was a shop for a studio. And in the showroom, there were pots for sale and you would open the door and you would go in and the showroom would be empty of people of people that work there anyways it would just be maybe a few other people milling about looking at the pottery but there was no one behind a counter there was no sales associate to help sell you anything And you would pick up the pots you liked or wanted, and you would pay for the pots by putting money. I believe he took checks, but for the most part, I believe my parents said it was cash, into a wicker basket, and they would leave with the pots. And there was a sign by the pot saying that when you left, make sure you left the door open so the cat could get out. Because apparently someone left once and the cat was inside and went a little bonkers and smashed a bunch of pots. These pots were apparently very affordable, and my parents collected many of them. And now, looking back, doing research, um, the potter had a very sound idea, an ideal that his work was not to be too expensive. If people bought it and they broke it, it wasn't going to be the end of the world. He wasn't overly interested in having things in museums, although a few pieces ended up there. And as he got older, more of those pots wound up in museums. But he always, he did try to keep prices low so anyone could afford them. I am talking about a potter named Warren McKenzie. He, as I said, was from the Midwest. He went to art school in Chicago, the Chicago Art Institute, and he wanted to be a painter. Um, there are interviews which he claims he wanted to be a world-class painter. And it took him a little while to realize it, but he eventually realized he wasn't very good. 
I mean, he was good enough to get into the Art Institute, but not, I think he was realizing that he, he might not be as good as he had hoped. But he actually had to leave art school. Um, and uh, I believe he was drafted in 1943 into the army. And he was gone for three years. And when he came back, he wanted, of course, to pursue his art career, his art diploma, his art schooling, his art education, um, and using using the GI Bill. So he went back to the Chicago Art Institute, and he said, I'm back. And they said, we are full. No more painters allowed. Sorry. So he picked up the Art Institute catalog. He just knew he wanted to be back at art school. And one of the few um, programs that had openings was the pottery. So he figured, well, I'll, I'll take pottery and maybe I'll switch over to pottery. Or I'll take pottery just to get back into school and in a year or two I'll switch over to painting and it'll be fine. So he, he started this new major, this new track, not knowing anything about it. And as he has said in a couple of interviews, the instructor didn't know very much about it either. Didn't, wasn't a very good instructor. They were making pinch pots and stuff like that. And um, it was, it sounds like for him and his classmates, um, it was frustrating until one day he and his classmates discovered a book called A Potter's Book by Bernard Leach, published in 1940. And his big takeaway from that book was that he said that any person should be able to make 50 pots in one day. And any person should be able to throw a 15 inch tall cylinder. Well, he didn't know how to do that. How could he become a potter if he didn't know how to do that? So he and his classmates could only see one option. And that option was using the potter's wheel without permission. <laughs> so he and his classmates would alternate days and sneak in and try to learn that potter's wheel. And it, apparently it caused quite a bit of trouble. He, uh, in uh, some of these interviews, he says he almost got expelled. But now I have these pots. Here are two of them. I uh, I don't know if I really have the space for them in my house currently. Well, I have space for these two, but I have quite an impressive Warren McKenzie collection now. And I like them quite a lot. And I like them even more now that I know his idea behind making these pots, his philosophy when it comes to pots and pottery. And I appreciate some of the few memories that I have when I was paying attention at this showroom on a farm when I was a kid. So that's Warren McKenzie, my friends. Hope you enjoyed the video. I don't have, I'll have to do some more art exploration videos. This was a lot of fun. And if you liked it, 
Please like, share, subscribe, tell your friends. And uh, I hope you're staying safe out there. I'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Goodbye, friends. Goodbye.